It's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into some of the key issues in the spotlight right now. Last week, top diplomats of G20 nations got together in Bali, Indonesia for G20 ministerial meetings. The summit included official events and reception and also provided an opportunity for talks on the sidelines. With various global conflicts and challenges on the agenda, including the war in Ukraine, inflation and global food and energy shortages, what kind of progress was made between the ministers? Now for answers, we connect to Doug Bando, Senior Fellow at the Cato Institute. It's lovely to see you again, Doug. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be on. Well, first off, this meeting, of course, it was very much overshadowed by the war in Ukraine. And we also saw a rather dramatic walkout of the Russian foreign ministers, uh, foreign minister as Western countries slammed Moscow for its continued invasion of Ukraine. Now, did we see much multilateralism or cooperation at this meeting? I mean, what were your main takeaways? Uh, no, the divisions were very significant. The agenda was set before the war. It did not include the war, but they couldn't get away from talking about it. Nevertheless, they were not going to get agreement from Russia, which was present, on anything in terms of the war. <clears throat> because of the divisions, you know, they didn't have a communique, they didn't have a joint photo, diplomats were walking out on one another's talks. So the multilateral aspect uh, really provided very little solutions to the problems that they were supposed to address. Right, so very little solutions, but let's talk more on the war because it, the headlines say that Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, was largely isolated in the meetings. Um, what do you say with so many countries <coughs> still showing objection? Some, do we, are, the, are people going to see some tangible shifts from the war after this ministerial meeting? Uh, no, the <clears throat> countries in the global south, including the hosts, uh, Indonesia, are definitely critical of the war. Nevertheless, they show very little interest in applying sanctions on Russia. And we have seen very little movement in countries to you know, stop buying Russian oil or to put other forms of pressure on Russia. So the division between uh, the, basically the United States, Europe, and uh, some of the important countries in Asia and everyone else is that uh, much of the global south is going to remain in a position where morally they believe the war is wrong, but practically they are not going to take steps that will hurt their own people. And many of them are skeptical about the moral authority of the US and of Europe. And well, that was also a great amount of attention on U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken sitting down with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi for talks on the sidelines, which they called candid and the session actually lasted for more than five hours, which is quite hard to do even with your nearest and dearest. Well, do you see this as a positive signal for the two rival superpowers? Well, the willingness to talk uh, between the two governments is very important. Uh, the U.S.-Chinese relationship is very difficult at this stage. You know, these are issues that are not going to be resolved in one sit down. Nevertheless, having top officials willing to discuss and frankly spending that much time talking does suggest an effort to make communication continue and also to look for areas where solutions can be found and progress can be made. Right now. South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin was also there and had a trilateral meeting with Blinken and Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi. How do you view the current trilateral relationship as they tackle North Korea's recent provocations as well as trying to contain China in the Indo-Pacific region? Well, the trilateral relationship is very important, obviously. I think the major change is the new government in the Republic of Korea. President Yoon seems very interested in trying to find a solution. Uh, this is something which the Biden administration also wants very badly. So I think there are opportunities here to be able to bring these countries together with Japan and to try to find a way to solve some of these difficult historical issues and have greater cooperation. Obviously, it's in the interest of these great uh, democratic countries to work together given the threats that uh, are felt from both China and North Korea. Right. Uh, Mr. Ba Bando, thank you for your insights. We look forward to speaking to you again.
You're welcome. Happy to be on.